The Now's Tori Cooper spent the afternoon at the Blessing Corner Ministries to find out why they host free Thanksgiving dinner every year and how they manage to feed hundreds of people. It's something Kern County looks forward to every year. So we're here. We've been doing this for this community for 20 years. This is our 20th year. And this year, Pastor Bonnie Gillette Turner of the Blessing Corner Ministries plans to keep the tradition going. We um, served them a Thanksgiving Day um, dinner. Last year, we served a little bit over 800. Yeah, including the seniors that we distributed to. And for the last two weeks? This is a little over four cups, maybe even five since it's running over. Pastor Bonnie and her team of volunteers have been accepting food donations from the community to feed the mouths of Kern County, prepping nearly 40 hams, 40 turkeys, and more than 300 pounds of yams for Thursday's dinner. And Pastor Bonnie says she chooses to spend Thanksgiving this way because she knows many people in her community need her to. Because we've been doing it for so long, families expect us to be there for them. I don't want to seem like we're in, encouraging these people, but, you know, if the family is in need, you know, we want to be there for them. But there are still a few things the Blessing Corner needs to make the community Thanksgiving dinner happen. You know, we're only planning for about 800 people, so, yeah. We could still use probably another 15 15 turkeys. Bonnie also says she could use some disposable aprons and gloves for her volunteers to serve the community. But she's not just taking care of Kern County's appetite. The Blessing Corner volunteers are also still gathering up donations from the community to help make life a little easier on those in need during the holidays and winter months. All types of warm clothing, you know, socks preferably new, but socks and, you know, hygiene items for, the, for this community, sleeping bags, warm blankets, you know, jackets. It doesn't have to be new, you know, gently used, you know, without any holes would be best. That was the Now Story Cooper reporting. The Blessing Corner also holds free Christmas dinner for the community each year, and it's still on schedule to take place this December. Volunteers are still accepting turkeys until Thanksgiving Day. For a look at Bonnie's recipe on old-fashioned gravy and candied yams, plus more on how to make a monetary donation to the organization, just head to our website, turn to 23com and you can find other events happening on Thanksgiving available now on our website, turn to 23.com. There you can find information about the Bakersfield Turkey Day run at Riverwalk Park and the free Thanksgiving meals being served by the mission at Kern County. Plus, if you plan on frying your bird, you can find helpful information on how to fry safely and not create a fire hazard. All that and more available right now on our website, turn to 23.com. Keeping the roads safe isn't the only goal of the Highway Patrol. They also focus on giving back, and this year for the ninth annual Chips for Kids Toy Drive, you can be a part of it. The drive kicks off today and will go until December 17th. Chips for Kids is an event that impacts thousands of kids here in Kern County, providing Christmas presents that can make a difference for them this holiday season. Organizers are taking new unwrapped toys for kids of all ages, from infants to toddlers, kids and teens. 23ABC's Mike Hart sat down with CHP officer Robert Rodriguez today, who says the drive is for kids up to age 16. He mentioned most people tend to buy for younger children, but people should also remember older kids take part as well, and that not all donations need to be toys. Probably your, your, your younger kids, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that unfortunately suffer the most are the older kids because our toy drive does go to age 16. Um, and so a lot of people will ask, you know, what do I bring that child that's, you know, 16 or 15 years old? And sometimes, you know, we've had those kids ask for a blanket, ask for socks. You know, I mean, it's pretty sad, but, but, but that's what they ask for. I mean, yes, yeah. you do get those. Hey, do you have any Playstations or Xboxes? Of course, we don't have any of that, but. <laughs> <laughs> If you'd like to be a part of making Christmas more magical for local kids, there's a number of drop-off locations here in town. We want to show you a list right now on your screen. You can take the new toys to all local Walgreens stores, Motor City and the Auto Mall, the CHP headquarters, the United Way, and even right here at 23ABC News. For more information, just head to our website, turn to 23.com. Annie? Ugh, the dreaded flu season is upon us, so I've got to ask you, is your doctor recommending that you get the flu shot? What about your children's pediatrician? Do they recommend them getting the flu shot? A new poll found that many parents have no plans to get their kids the flu shot this year. I looked into why this could be. Last year, there were over 100 deaths from the flu in young children. Even still, this flu season, one third of parents plan to skip the flu shot for their kids. But Dr. Judith Schley with Denver Public Health says that's extremely dangerous. They can be hospitalized and can die from it, as we saw last year. And we assume that this year will be just as bad as last year. 
A new report from CS Mott Children's Hospital found nearly half of parents usually follow their pediatrician's advice, but 21% say they don't remember if their doctor recommended their child to get a flu shot. Many adults don't remember flu shots being recommended by doctors when they were growing up, but Dr. Schley says that's because before the year 2000, they weren't. Before that time period, we were asking only high-risk adults, elderly, pregnant women, well, at risk children to get vaccinated. Nowadays, parents say they have their own reasons as to why they don't get their kids flu shots. Side effects, the belief the shot doesn't work, their child is healthy and doesn't need to be vaccinated. You might still get flu, but by taking the vaccine, you'll reduce the comorbidities and the disease uh, burden from taking it. It'll be a milder infection. Dr. Schley says don't wait to get the shot. Flu activity starts high in December and January, so the best time is now to get it. And next in our lineup, a record number of people are flying for Thanksgiving. The TSA showing us how they're going to keep those security lines moving. You're watching the now. Let's get a first check of the Now News Feed. Promising results from a new treatment for peanut allergies. The drug is derived from peanuts. Two-thirds of the kids were able to eat the equivalent of two peanuts without any symptoms by the end of the study. One of the researchers expects the drug to be approved for use next year. The White House is warning CNN's Jim Acosta could have his press pass revoked again at the end of the month. Friday, a judge forced the White House to restore Acosta's pass for 14 days. And now CNN is asking for another emergency hearing on this issue. Up to 3,000 foreign doctors in the UK are having their backgrounds checked right now because of this woman. She's in jail for fraud after she changed an elderly client's will to make herself a beneficiary. But authorities also found she's a fake psychiatrist with no qualifications, and she's been allowed to practice for the last 22 years. A record number of people are expected to fly this week, and we know what that means. A record people trying to get through security lines, which can be a nightmare. The Now's Nicole Val talked to the TSA about how they're trying to speed up lines and what we can do to help. 
If you're planning a trip to Chicago, New York, Boston, Houston, or just about anywhere this upcoming holiday, listen up. We're expecting an all-time high for 2018 Thanksgiving travel. U.S. airport officials say 30 million passengers are set to step through security checkpoints between November 16th and November 27th up 5% from last year. And we want to ensure the passengers can get through our security system uh, quicker than they do uh, in the past. To speed things up, TSA Administrator David Pekoski says new technology is being put into more airports like automated screening lanes and improved carry-on scanners. But travelers have to do their part. The biggest checkpoint holdups packing prohibited carry-on items and forgetting things in your pockets. My advice for pre-check passengers would be um, to just please be patient. Even pre-check passengers will be gambling with longer lines this holiday. I've been in times when I thought I want to get in the other line. <laughs> Travelers like Dan Stagg are already seeing that. We recognize that uh, for a lot of passengers, they're seeing those lines are longer than what they expect. But some good news. Pekoski says pre-check changes are also on the way. You'll just have to wait to see them till after the holidays. We are going to put some new procedures in place uh, beginning after the first of the year, either adding more pre-check dedicated lines or changing some of our internal procedures uh, to accommodate them. For the now, I'm Nicole Vowell reporting. Well, it's that time of year again where 23ABC joins together with the Bakersfield Homeless Center and the Alliance Against Family Violence for the annual diaper drive. This is the third year the 23ABC team has hosted the drive, which aims to collect 23,000 diapers for local families. Children can go through several diapers a day and hundreds every single month. It's a cost that not every family can comfortably afford. So to help make an impact this holiday season, we're accepting diapers at several locations throughout town from now until December 10th. If you'd like to donate, no amount is too big or too small. You can drop off diapers right here at the 23 ABC studios on 21st Street from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. Donations are also being accepted at various Pharmacy Express locations throughout town. For more information about the diaper drive and its impact on the community, just head to our website, turn to 23.com. All right, well, we're going to take a live look outside downtown Bakersfield. You can see it in this camera yeah. shot here, just how bad our air is, Allison. We're seeing those hazy and smoky conditions, smoke making its way into the county from the campfire that is burning to our north. That caused temperatures to be slightly down from what we were feeling over the weekend. But we are tracking a system just off the Southern California coast. That's what bringing those cloudy conditions here into the county and we are seeing that right now but those clouds mixed with that thick layer of smoke really acted as a blanket and the smoke actually being trapped here in the county you can see still very calm winds across the county just seven mile per hour winds here in Bakersfield 11 up in Isabella and 14 down at the base of the grapevine so unfortunately that means that tomorrow we will have another day of air quality that is unhealthy for everyone with an AQI of 156 and there is no burning for all this is actually tomorrow will be the fourth day in a row of this bad air quality, but we are tracking a storm that's making its way into the county on Wednesday, continuing through Thanksgiving Day. So the best chance of rain is actually going to be in the evening and overnight hours on Wednesday. You can see that rain continuing till around 2 a.m. And as we head into the early morning hours, that's when that rain is going to start drying out. Still seeing cloudy conditions as well as strong winds, especially through the passes in Tehachapi, as well as down at the base of the grapevine. But just for how much rain we will be receiving here in the valley, well, we have been so dry, so anywhere from a trace up to a few hundredths of an inch, actually our mountain communities are going to be seeing a better chance. So the heaviest rainfall is going to be Wednesday night into Thursday, drying out a little bit on Friday, but we are tracking a second system making its way into the county that could be causing some rain on Saturday and Sunday. We also could be seeing some fog as well as some impact to any travel plans that you have. The Now Bakersfield will be right back. 23 ABC and I are releasing a cookbook recipe.
A sobering new warning about alcohol-related deaths. They're growing. In fact, we're more likely to die because of alcohol than our much-talked-about opioid crisis here in the U.S. Well, today, one family is opening up about their daughter's death, hoping it can save the lives of others. Here's the now's Corey Rangel. She was just a servant to this disease. Ron and June Bird know the pain of watching a loved one struggle with alcohol. They helplessly watched their daughter Erica fight it for years. It would have to be in all caps, helpless. You know, as a father, I'm supposed to be able to fix things. I couldn't fix it. After becoming partner at her law firm, doctors diagnosed Erica with breast cancer. Her parents say Erica then became depressed, which made her drinking worse. Nothing worked, not rehab, not even the family's many attempts to force her into treatment. Despite our best efforts, her friend's best efforts, her best efforts, it was to no avail. And it killed her. Erica died in 2011 at the age of 42. Her death is part of a disturbing, growing trend. In the past 10 years, the number of deaths attributed to alcohol has gone up 35 percent. Among women, it has soared 85 percent. I just know it is a, a, a terrible epidemic. Uh, alcohol kills you in many ways. You know, suicides, accidents, organ failures, disease. A new study by the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation found this spike started during the recession and that growing pressure on working mothers might also play a role. They are, I think, by and large, ashamed of it. Our daughter was. They do their best to hide it until they can't. Erica's parents hope the report helps break the stigma associated with alcoholism and leads to more resources devoted to fighting the problem. For The Now, I'm Corey Rangel. Thank you, Corey. Well, the holidays are tough for a lot of people, mainly because they don't have a lot of extra money for the special dinners and the travel and the presents. It just gets too much. In fact, nearly half of Americans feel pressure to spend more on gifts than they're comfortable with. Bankrate bringing up this conversation and new survey released today. Women, parents, and those with middle income feel the most pressure. Giving frugally was also discussed. So one of the most popular options is limiting what you give and who you give to. Doing secret Santa with friends and family is always a good way to do that without feeling any guilt. And finding sales and coupons on the items you're willing to buy. And giving homemade gifts is great, like maybe it's a framed picture you found on social media. Regifting is also something people say they consider during the holidays. And so is giving secondhand toys. They can be a great secondhand gift considering how quickly kids go tired and playing with something that they get a lot of during the holiday season and often get overwhelmed with presents. Okay, a good motto though, we can always remember, it's the thought that counts. Facebook, Amazon, and other specialty pop-up stores are opening this holiday season and today we're taking you inside the first ever crowdfunding pop-up store in the country. Take a look at this. It opened over the weekend in a St. Louis mall. It's called We the People. It features products that so far have really only been available online and through Kickstarter type campaigns. If you were to buy an iPhone online, you don't worry because you know it's going to work. But if you saw like a Kickstarter phone online, it looked really great, but would you spend the money if you didn't see it? So. A retail store really bridges that gap. The products featured in the crowdfunding store will rotate frequently, but here's a few of the first ones featured and how the ideas came to life. Skeletors are leather fossil art kits, which I designed as a leather sculptor in order to make your own little prehistoric toys. It was suggested to me to do a Kickstarter. The only way I would be able to make a multitude more of these is with the help of a machine. Myself and my colleagues were kind of joking around like, oh, I made this camera out of cardboard. Maybe I can make one using my 3D printer. And I'd say about four years later, um, we're kind of where we are now. In a lot of ways, it's really just a, a regular old large format film camera. What makes it unique is it's incredibly lightweight. Um, and it's also very affordable compared to cameras of similar features and quality. Crowdfunding is expected to grow to a $300 billion market by 2025. About half of campaigns are successful, according to the site Fundly. Well, getting back to our lineup, something that has always come with every new car for decades could soon be going away. Got any guesses? You're watching The Now.
get another check of the Now News Feed. Prescriptions for pets, it's a big business. So it's probably no surprise that Express Scripts, which is known for delivering meds to people, is now teaming up with Petco to deliver medication for pets. It took 27 years for a bookstore in England to finally sell a children's biography of William the Conqueror, and the store tweeted the book had been in the store since 1991. Pretty crazy. And you can now watch full-length movies on YouTube. It just made a deal with MGM to stream more than 100 films, including Rocky, Terminator, and Legally Blonde. Well, if you're lucky enough to save up for a brand new car, one of the best things about that is the new car smell, am I right? Well, now Ford is trying to get rid of it. It turns out customers in China have been complaining about the new car smell. According to Reuters, the smell is the number one turnoff Chinese customers have about cars. That's ahead of the trouble with engine and fuel economy. So how does the new car, that new car smell, how does it even get into cars? Have you always wondered that? Well, experts say what we're smelling is actually a cocktail of chemical compounds. They're released by the new materials in your car. Ford's method to combat the smell, though, is described as baking the car. The new car is parked in the sun, the windows slightly cracked open, and then the heater and fan are turned on. This is supposed to push out the smell. But Ford says it would only put cars through this process after they've been purchased. So you'd have the option to actually keep it. Okay, more people are considering surgery centers as an option now. They're less expensive, but what are the trade-offs for that lower cost? Tomorrow on The Now, we're going to break that down for you. And coming up tonight on 23 ABC News at 11, we take a look at the effect gang violence can have on everyday people and what resources are available for them to help cope with trauma and PTSD. Again, that's tonight on 23 ABC News at 11. In the meantime, though, as we take a look at our air quality right now, it is just bad out there, Allison. We can see it just You're, outside. Yeah, you really can, especially at night when you can look at lights in the parking lot. It's like thick layer that's hanging out across the valley. So the air quality warning that we've been tracking for more than a week now will be in effect till at least 10 a.m. tomorrow, and we will continue to track that. And tomorrow, actually, another day of air quality that is unhealthy for everyone. That will be the fourth day in a row. But unfortunately, we're not seeing strong enough winds to help clear out any of that smoke hanging out across the horizon. Just seven mile per hour winds here in Bakersfield right now, 16 at the base of the grapevine. So. Again, unhealthy for everyone again tomorrow. Those hazy conditions with a high of 68 degrees. But then we are tracking a storm making its way into the county, bringing rain chances Wednesday night, continuing to the early morning hours on Thanksgiving. We would love that rain to help the air here. Mm -hmm. And happy pre-Thanksgiving. Yeah. We'll see you back here tonight at 11.